Hey, what's happening, guys? What's going on, YouTube? You guys have tuned into Rules for Rebels. It's uh, It's been a while since I made a video. I kind of got burned out on YouTube for a little while, and it's also been uh, summer here in the Midwest, so I wanted to get out and uh, do some traveling and enjoy the weather, so I took a little bit of a break from YouTube, but I uh, wanted to get back into things here. Uh, I got an interesting story for you guys today. So a recent study was put out by Clever Real Estate, and Clever Real Estate has been doing this study for uh, a number of years. And uh, what this study looked at was graduating college seniors who, you know, at this point in time happen to be Gen Z's. So it looked at Gen Z's graduating from college and it looked at what their salary expectations are or what they think that they're going to be earning out of college. And then it looked at what they're actually going to be earning out of college or, or what are realistic starting salaries right now. And there was quite a disconnect. Um, and I thought this story was interesting for a number of reasons. It, I think it kind of ties in with uh, the great resignation, this whole new quiet quitting phenomenon that, uh, that the media is pushing. Um, but also, I think it kind of uh, reinforces the idea that the only way you're ever really going to get ahead in life is by doing your own thing, starting your own business, um, having multiple income streams, having some side hustles. So if we look at the data here, uh, Gen Z's graduating from college in 2022 are expecting to earn $103,880 at their first job. Uh, however, according to the real data and the real salaries out there in the world, uh, realistically, their starting salary is probably going to be $55,260. So uh, they're almost doubling uh, what, you know, what they think they're going to earn coming out of college is almost double of what they're realistically expecting to earn coming out of college. And another thing about this study from a few years back really surprised me. So if we looked at the same study from 2019, in 2019, the average starting salary was $46,000 and some change. And if you looked at what graduating seniors or people coming out of college expected to earn, in 2019, they expected to earn $57,000. So yeah, their expectation was about $10,000 more than what a realistic starting salary for them was. Um, but I think that's, you know, they were being uh, optimistic. They were hoping for the best. They were kind of still in the ballpark. So what happened over the course of what's that three years, 2019 to 2022? What happened over the course of three years that people's, you know, people went from expecting to earn $57,000 a year to expecting to earn $103,000 a year. One other interesting thing about this study, they, they found that the college major or the career path that was the most out of touch with reality was journalists. Uh, I think people with journalism degrees or graduating with journalism degrees expected to earn something like $104,000. And they had one of the, the lower salary expectations. They were expected to earn about $46,000. So they were way, way, way off the mark. But what happened over this couple of years between 2019 and uh, 2022 that made people's expectations grow so much and made people so out of touch with reality? It could be a number of things. Did, did, you know, did COVID turn all of our minds to mush? Um, is it the insane inflation of the past couple of years? I mean, and I can kind of see why somebody might think that, right? Like I just went to buy a box of cereal the other night. It was, I think, $6.99 or $7.99 for a box of cereal. That same box of cereal in 2019, I probably could have bought for $2.99 or $3.99. If you look at gas prices, gas prices have, have, have tripled. Um, you know, the cost of used cars is, is up substantially. I just had to put new tires on my car. The cost of tires um, is insane right now. So I guess when, you know, the cost of rent is rising, the cost to buy homes in a lot of markets has tripled. Uh, so I guess if you look at the cost of things around you, maybe you expect that your salary to jump um, with the cost of living. I don't know that this explains anything away, but one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is for the past two years, we've been hearing about the great resignation, right? Everybody either leaving the workforce or switching careers, you know, that kind of matches up with the timeline uh, of this shift in salary expectations. And more recently, uh, we're hearing about this, you know, quote unquote, quiet quitting phenomenon, um, which I was thinking about making a video about uh, that topic in and of itself. But it, it does seem like those two stories kind of line up with... Uh, you know, this huge jump in expected uh, expected salaries. Another thing that could throw this off, you know, with the labor shortages going on from the past two years, we have seen a lot of salaries jump. You know, I think white collar jobs and office jobs, have, you know, they, they've gone up, but they haven't jumped as much as if you look at like fast food jobs and hospitality jobs, which throughout the pandemic we saw is an industry that people were leaving and an industry that people no longer want to work in. 
Um, but I remember I was visiting my sister out in Ohio, and uh, I think I'd stopped at a Tim Hortons or something like that. And they were, and I think another day, I think I had to get Taco Bell for my, my nephew. Um, and they were paying, I think, $22 an hour with a $1,000 signing bonus. Um, so I guess if, you know, if, if you're a young person, if you're a Gen Z person in college and, you know, your first job working fast food is making $22 an hour, which is, is kind of abnormal, right? Like prior to uh, the labor shortages, if you got a job in fast food or retail or a minimum wage job, you'd probably be making $7 an hour, $9 an hour, $10 an hour, $12 an hour. But because of the labor shortage, if fast food is paying $22, or $22 an hour with a signing bonus, I, I could see how you figure well, you know, my professional job has to pay more than that. So I don't know exactly what got people's uh, expectations so high, um, but there was a big jump between 2019 and 2022. And this story was also interesting to me um, because when I was coming out of high school, the narrative pushed was you have to go to college if you want to have a good life. And, and what was kind of a shame, there were really no other alternatives pushed. So if you said, I don't know that I'm necessarily cut out for college or I don't know what I want to do or I don't want to go to college, uh, you know, your guidance counselor, your parents, people in your life uh, would probably say, if you don't want to be a loser, you have to go to college. If you don't want to dig ditches, you have to go to college. And nobody presented other options like, oh, you know, you have a real mechanical aptitude. Did you think about being a car mechanic or, uh, you know, hey, have you ever thought about going into, into construction? Have you ever thought about learning a trade? Hey, you know, there's a lot of certificate programs out there where you can go to school for three months or six months and become a radiology tech or uh, you know, something like those things were never really pushed. I know when I was in high school, some of the girls uh, senior year got to leave half day every day and they would go to cosmetology school and they were kind of getting set up to be uh, cosmetologists or estheticians. But there really wasn't any other alternatives push uh, besides college for the vast majority of us. Um, so everybody was kind of funneled into college. And, and I kind of went into college and came out of college. Uh, you know, call it naive, but expecting that, you know, I, I thought you come out of college, you get your bachelor's degree, and uh, people are just throwing six-figure jobs at you. And I quickly learned that that was not the case. I think my first interview out of college, uh, they offered me $46,000. And while that was more money than I'd ever made in my life before working retail and fast food jobs and such, um, you know, it was a far cry from the six figures that I, I thought, you know, guidance counselors and teachers and my parents had promised me I would get um, if I wound up graduating from college. And, you know, in the circles of make money online and entre entrepreneurship, um, you know, I think a lot of uh, a, a discussion that comes up a lot is the discussion of is college worth it or is college a scam? Last week, Joe Biden uh, signed the executive order to forgive either ten or twenty thousand dollars of college debt, of student loan debt. Um, Last week, it you know, we still have to see if that's actually going to go through, if that's actually legal that, you know, if it's actually legal what he did, it is going to wind up being challenged. Uh, but the fact that Joe Biden had to across the board forgive up to twenty thousand dollars of student loan debt, I think that in and of itself shows that the education system is broken and that college is not worth it, because if college was worth it, uh, the government wouldn't need to hand out twenty thousand dollars to people who uh, paid money and spent you know, four years of their life getting a degree uh, that leaves them unable to make enough money to pay back that loan and, uh, and you know, take care of themselves and support themselves. I think there probably was a point in time that college actually did work and that there was an ROI on college. I think that probably ended with uh, with the Gen, Gen Xers. Uh, I think Gen Xers, you know, the, the 2008 financial crisis kind of rocked their lives and rocked their careers, but at least they were able to graduate from college, get high paying jobs, uh, you know, probably buy their first home, pay off some of that college debt before the 2008 recession hit. Um, and so I'm a little bit more sympathetic or empathetic towards millennials because the generation before them went to college, college worked out, they saw that and they figured, why won't it work out for me? Um, however, that system kind of stopped working. Another thing you got to consider is back when uh, millennials, and if, if you're a millennial like myself, you can probably relate to this, but back when we were either coming out of high school, in college, the internet was not what it is today. Um, you didn't necessarily have sites like Indeed and Glassdoor where you could go read about jobs, where you could see what an expected salary was. You didn't necessarily have all these tools and all that data out there. Uh, so you just kind of like took the word of parents and guidance counselors and people who had gone before you uh, that college is going to allow you to learn to earn more uh, more income over your lifetime uh, than if you didn't go to college. I feel like for probably at least the past five years, if not the past 10 years, 
Uh, you know, college has kind of been revealed as a scam. We've kind of, you know, the narrative has been out there that if you go for STEM, if you become an engineer, if you become an accountant, uh, you probably have a bright future. But if you're going to college to get a degree in basket weaving or feminist studies um, or even just some random liberal arts major or communications, um, that you're putting yourself into a whole lot of debt. And uh, there's not necessarily going to be an ROI on having uh, a degree in those areas. We've also seen an inflation on education. Uh, the more people who have degrees, the less valuable that a degree actually is. I, I guess kind of where I'm going with this is, is, in my view, for millennials, millennials were the first generation to kind of have the rug pulled out from under them and for college to no longer work. Uh, but if you are a Gen Z person, either in college or going to college today, You've probably already seen your aunts or uncles, maybe your parents, an older brother or sister, uh, spend a bunch of money in college, spend a bunch of time in college uh, to come out with $60,000 in debt, $80,000 in debt, $150,000 in debt, and uh, wind up working a job as a barista or getting an office job making $35,000 a year. And it's like, well, what was the point of going to college, spending all that time and spending all that money um, if the high income isn't going to follow? Uh, you know, without further ado, let's just hop in and take a look at this article. So the study was actually done by Clever Real Estate. I'll link you guys to the study in the description box below. Um, but uh, Yahoo, was it Yahoo Business or Yahoo, um, actually put out an article talking a little bit about this study. So let's give this a quick read. New college grads are in for some reverse sticker shock. A recent survey by Clever Real Estate found that while the average starting salary for a college student is 55000 $260,000, current college students expect to make $103,880 at their first job. Uh, somebody quoted in this article says, I believe the gap between salary expectations and reality is due to Gen Z students realizing how much it costs to live a comfortable life in the United States, said Denitha Doe, an, econ an economist and spokesperson for Clever Real Estate. For example, rent has increased 149% since 1985, while income only grew by 35%. Current graduates are simply asking for their compensation to reflect the cost of living in the United States. Um, they didn't address this, but obviously the cost of college has skyrocketed since the 90s as well. Uh, the article goes on to say, in 2019, the college students surveyed by Clever expected to make $57,964, about 10000 more, than the average starting salary at the time, which was 47000 Just three years later, however, college students are expecting to make nearly $46,000 more. And that's that huge gap that we talked about, right? In 2022, the average salary is uh, $57,000. Uh, people came, or actually, I think it might have been less than that. In 2022, the average salary is $55,000. Uh, students are expecting to make 103000 But just three years earlier, uh, they were expecting to make 57, but, you know, the salary was 47. So they weren't nearly as much off the mark. Um, let's see. Uh, one big reason, uh, one big reason is the rate of inflation, Doe said. Inflation in 2019 hovered around 2%, whereas inflation in 2022 is hovering around 8%. Everyday expenses are much higher in 2022 than in 2019. Therefore, salary expectations are increasing to match the rise in the cost of living. Another reason could be the psychological impact of the pandemic. For some folks, the pandemic revealed the desire to work less and enjoy life more. In some cases, this means an individual will need a higher salary. Current graduates are unapologetic about asking for a salary that allows them to prioritize their well-being. And again, I thought the timing of, you know, this shift in expectations of college graduates uh, it's, it's, I don't know what it explains, but it's interesting that it lines up with the timeline of the quote unquote great resignation. Um, and more recently, this quiet quitting phenomenon, the students surveyed cited the ability to earn high wages in their careers as the number one reason they are attending college. Yet some are still choosing majors with notoriously low salaries. This can lead to significant gaps between salary expectations and reality. And one thing I noticed when I was uh, going to college, um, you know, a lot of my peers, Oh, sorry about that. Guys, got a, uh, my girlfriend's out of town. She's down south. So, uh, just got a phone call. Had to take that. So hopefully I didn't lose my place. But I think I was saying when I was, uh, coming out of high school, I know a lot of, uh, my peers wanted to go into creative fields, whether it be, you know, designing video games, music production, uh, even being journalists, things like that. And a lot of them went to expensive private schools, got themselves into $80,000, $100,000, $150,000 in debt. 
uh, only to come out of college and realize that those careers aren't really in demand or only a small percentage uh, of people do very well in those careers. You know, if you come out of school with a, a degree in music production or something like that, unless you wind up uh, producing Kanye West albums, you know, the reality is you're probably going to be working in the AV department of a school or a church making $35,000 a year with $150,000 of student loan debt that you have to pay off. And one thing that's nice today uh, with all the, the new technology as well as with kind of, uh, you know, the Internet and what the Internet has done for us, if you wanted to go into journalism, you no longer have to try to get a job with the New York Times. You don't need to go through these gatekeepers. Uh, you know, the traditional media is dying. Uh, the the blogs and, and media and news that, that are getting the most attention are independent media. There's no reason why you couldn't go get a college degree in something worthwhile and then on the side start a blog if you want to start a, a, a blog or a news site or a YouTube channel. Um, you know, in the past, if, if you wanted to get into music production, there was really no equipment out there available to consumers to do this type of stuff. Um, but today, I mean, the, the most popular music out there right now is like SoundCloud rappers and, and people making music in their bedroom. So you don't need to spend $150,000 to go to Columbia in Chicago to, to learn music production. You can watch some YouTube videos. Uh, you can buy a $100 piece of software and do it at home in your bedroom. And so that's one of the nice things is a lot of these these things or fields that in the past you would have had to go to college for, uh, you can do on your own now. And you can, you know, be self-taught. You can buy a course. You can go on YouTube. Uh, you can read about something online, and there, there's no need to, to spend four years and get a college degree to do some of this stuff. Uh, back into the article, the article says the student surveyed cited the, okay, so we talked about that. Uh, the career path with the biggest gap between the two is journalism. Students entering this field expect to earn a starting salary of $107,040, when in actuality, the average starting salary is $44,800. Humanities and liberal arts students also have too high salary expectations. The expected starting salary for these majors is $105,790, but the actual starting salary for graduates with these majors is $46,500. Uh, let's see, the article goes on to say, given their high salary expectations, it's not surprising that recent college grads who have accepted job offers are often unhappy with their starting salaries. Among the students who have jobs lined up after graduation, about half, 49%, are not satisfied with their starting salaries, and about one in three students, 31%, doubt they'll make enough money to live comfortably after graduation. Recent grads are contending with a number of money fears, including the inability to afford basic expenses, 30%, the inability to do fun things, 29%, having to work a second job, 29%, the inability to pay off student loans, 29%, and taking on credit card debt, 29%. And these fears may not be unwarranted. The cost to live comfortably in major cities is often higher than the average salary of $55,260. A single adult would need to earn at least $74,282 in after-tax income to live comfortably in San Francisco. Um, and I don't think you'd be living super comfortably in San Francisco on $74,000 a year. You also would never, ever be able to be a homeowner. Uh, well, a single adult would need to make $66,214 to live in New York City, Clever reported. So, uh, you know, I thought this was an interesting story. I thought it was an interesting study. Uh, what, what lessons can we glean from this? Well, you're never going to get wealthy working for somebody else. Um, and you're probably never going to get ahead working for somebody else. So what does that mean? I, you know, the way I see it, there's basically three paths. You can start your own business or get your own thing going. You can get some type of side hustle or get good at investing so that you have multiple income streams and you have some income streams outside of your nine to five job. Um, or really the only other way I see to get ahead is kind of living the FIRE lifestyle. Um, and I've talked about this in videos before. You know, FIRE stands for financial independence, retiring early. And the idea is even somebody with a modest salary, if they save heavily uh, and invest at a relatively young age, uh, have financial independence and could potentially choose to retire uh, or they could go kind of the coast fire or barista fire route and kind of get a low key, low stress, 20, 30 hour a week job and uh, and kind of drop out of the rat race. But I thought this story was pretty interesting. I thought you guys might find it interesting as well. Uh, I'll link to the study as well as the article down below. Would love to hear your guys' thoughts on this story. You know, if you guys want to share uh, what what were your salary expectations coming out of college? Um, and I know incomes and things like that are personal, but if you want to share either percentage-wise how far off you were from your expected salary, or even if you want to share what you came out of college thinking you were going to make um, versus what you actually came out of college making, you know, maybe it'll help some other people out there. 
Um, you know, I think my audience is primarily millennials, but, uh, you know, I know people who watch, you know, make money online, entrepreneurship type content often tend to be, you know, teens, high school students, even college students. Um, you know, so just think about this. It, if you're thinking about going into college and taking on that debt and spending four years of your life, um, you know, look long and hard at what you're spending on college versus what is a realistic salary expectation coming out of college. And, uh, you know, then make an educated decision on whether it's worth getting that college degree, whether you might want to go into the trades or get some certificate program, um, or whether you just want to go out into the workforce and get a job and just kind of avoid college debt altogether. But as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop a comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to the channel, click that subscribe button down below. As always, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next video.